So what is RetroPie? Well, RetroPie is a piece of software that allows you to play all of your favorite retro arcade games from a single console interface. It's packed with emulators from the early Atari all the way to Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, and even beyond. And I'll show you how you can get it set up quickly and easily. So let's get into it. All right, now that you have all your hardware, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go out to Ubuntu's official website and we're going to look for Ubuntu 22.04.4 LTS. Uh, that's long term support. This version, I think, is a more stable version for what we're going to do later. The latest version, 24. something, seems to be giving me problems with the uh, workstation player so we're just going to stick with 2204 for now and you can see that you have a desktop image and a server image to choose from um, the desktop image is what we're after but instead of downloading it right there from that particular link if you scroll down you're going to see a series of available downloads and we're actually going to choose about 4.7 gigs the reason why we're going to use that option uh, is because we get the uh, checksums along with it. That's going to be important for verifying the integrity of the files that we download. This comes handy when you're dealing with ROM files or BIOS files or other files you're getting from third-party websites. We're able to ensure that everything that we download wasn't compromised um, along the way and you'll see here after this download completes we can check its hash value and then we can compare it against the original hash um, so i'll show you how to do that uh, once that's done downloading okay you want to open up your command prompt all right and then we're just going to change directory into the directory of your downloads folder so for me that's just cd downloads um, and we're going to type in cert util space dash hash file space uh, type ub and then you can probably hit tab and it will autofill from there so that's the file that we're going to be generating the hash from so then just take uh, space and just do SHA256 and that's just specifying the algorithm that we're going to use so that will just take a second to load and you can see that's the hash generated and it does match the original hash of the file so we can we can move on So now we're going to install VMware Workstation Player. All right, so we're going to click Next here. All right, and we're just going to accept the uh, terms of the license agreement. No problem. Um, we can keep it standard here. You can add the enhanced keyboard driver um, for your purposes. Just for me, I'm not going to do it right now it's for the purposes of the tutorial. Uh, and let's not join the customer experience um, and looks like the defaults there are okay so let's just hurry up and get that going um, shouldn't take too long uh, you could use you know Hyper-V um, or VirtualBox or something um, I like to use the workstation player because you can pass through the gamepad USBs into the virtual machine easier uh, using workstation player so all right we can go ahead and, and uh, finish that awesome let's launch it all right it's asking for a license we can use the free license no problem click finish there and now we want to create 
our virtual machine. So we just go up to the top and hit create new virtual machine. Uh, we are going to use that ISO that we downloaded, right? That 220403. Um, and that's where I have it. So let's select it. Uh, and it's going to use the easy install and it'll give us uh, a prompt here to personalize it for us. So I'm just going to use the name RetroPie as the user. Give it a eight character password. Uh, the virtual machine name, let's just call it RetroPie PC. Um, let's give it 50 gigs of space. Uh, keep it in a single file uh, for now. Uh, and let's go ahead and customize it right from the get go. The minimum RAM is four gigs, but um, if you can, give it six just so it uh, runs a little faster. Processor cores, we can leave it two. Enable the virtualization because later on we're going to actually install Workstation Player within the VM uh, and I'll sh show you why we're going to do that. As far as USB controller compatibility, let's leave it at 2.0 so we can see the game pads when we do the pass through because um, sometimes the game pads are going to be USB 2.0. All right, let's go ahead and power it on and click finish there. So now we'll just get a standard install of the Ubuntu desktop. From here, we're going to install uh, RetroPie with Emulation Station and all of our ROMs and all of our custom features on here. So this is just one way to do it. Uh, as I mentioned, um, you can install it on a, on a Raspberry Pi. You can install it on a... PC that's running something else, um, or you can install it on a dedicated, you know, laptop or PC where all it's running is RetroPie. This is a pretty standard prompt that we'll just click through. Um, you know, use English for the keyboard. All right, uh, let's do a minimal installation. Uh, we really don't need a lot of this other. All, all these other packages um, unless you want them for your own reasons but if we're just going to be running RetroPie on it let's just do that and get the download updates while installing Ubuntu option in there uh, that way we can just kind of get a lot of the updates out of the way now uh, rather than doing it later and we do want to install it on this virtual hard disk um, so we want to erase everything that's on there All right, that's just telling us, okay, it's going to be reformatting everything. Okay, yes, it is asking for the time zone. Go ahead, click through that. All right, and uh, again, just fill out your name, your username, your PC name, and again, do your passwords. I like to just log in automatically. I'm not too worried about it uh, right now. And I don't have this as part of an Active Directory domain, so we can leave that unchecked. Uh, I'm just going to wait till this copying files part is completed. Uh, that's just preference of mine. So this is a good option if you want to either test it out or if you want to be able to just quickly spin it up and maybe you know, make changes to it over time and doing it all in software, you know, on your gaming PC or on your personal PC. Uh, it's just a really easy way to, you know, play the games when you want, turn the VM off when you're done. And it doesn't really, you're not hogging, you know, a complete laptop for it, but yet you're using the, you know, the more powerful resources um, of your personal computer to run it. Versus, you know, a Raspberry Pi where you're pretty limited with the resources. All right, so we are complete there. Let's click continue. And now we can just wait for the system to install. All right, looks like the system is complete. We can hit restart now.
Okay, and now we are logged in uh, to our new virtual machine uh, running Ubuntu desktop. Um, and you can kind of skip through the wizards here for now. All right, so first thing is we're going to go into the terminal. Okay, so open up the terminal. And I'm just using the uh, documentation um, from the official uh, RetroPie uh, site which is in the description as well if you go over there it, it is pretty straightforward on how to download it install it and configure it so uh, we're still going to go through it right now here with you guys and let's just uh, ignore that for now so I'm just pasting the first command uh, sudo apt update and upgrade so that will just um, ensure that we have the latest uh, apt packages and updates on our system so when we go to install the retropie uh, setup script um, everything will install as it should so hit y there to continue this should not take too long Okay, so when that is done, uh, we're going to go on to the second command here, which I'm just pasting in. Uh, this is actually going to give us the uh, necessary packages that we need for RetroPie itself. And that should be pretty quick. And again, any missing packages or errors, you can look on that. Um, website for uh, a specific command you can run um, in case you have any issues at that step but uh, here you can see that we didn't have any issues so we're going to continue to the next one which is uh, downloading the latest RetroPie setup script uh, that also should be pretty quick um, so now that it's all downloaded um, let's change directory so do cd Right there, retropy uh, dash setup. Let's run sudo dot backslash retropy underscore setup dot sh. That is the that is the script that is going to launch. All right, so you'll see this uh, blue screen here. Um, it's kind of giving you an overview of uh, what it is. Uh, so just click OK with, the, with that. And now this is this is your kind of script that you're going to work with. So uh, basic install is going to install kind of the emulators and ROM folders for you. And then we'll get into later on how to add more emulators and add more uh, packages. But the basic install will get you started. And that will take a little bit. I would say about 15 minutes. Okay, and you may have noticed that your screen may have locked while it was doing its install. Uh, which is kind of annoying, but we can actually fix that right now, uh, just to not worry about it later. Uh, just go to the bottom left, go into settings, right, uh, and we're going to be looking for privacy. Privacy, right there. All right, then go down to screen, okay, and then here we can change the uh, blank screen display. Let's put it on never, turn off the automatic screen lock. Let's turn off lock screen on suspend and let's just get rid of notifications for it too so now that we don't have to worry about that later on okay so the other thing we're going to want to do is come down here to this configuration emulation station is actually going to be the front end we're going to set that to auto start when it reboots it will start for you automatically you don't have to go in and tell it to launch 
All right, so you can see that we have a lot of other options here as well, but let's just get out of that for now. So let's go over, let's exit, and let's actually type in the word emulation station, one word, and press enter. And you'll see that the front end launches, but there's no game pads detected. So right now, we're just going to press F4, and we're going to quit out of that, and we're going to get our, our gamepad detected. So plug in your USB gamepad to your PC, okay? And then you're going to come up to Player, Removable Devices, and then for me, it's going to be this Xbox Series USB gamepad. And we're going to say yes, disconnect from the host, and now connect to this virtual machine. So that's all you have to do to get your gamepad connected. So now we can come back to the terminal launch emulation station again. Now it launches, now it sees the gamepad. So now we can hold a button on the controller and now here we are. And now we can set up our controller. So we're just gonna go through, you know, push the button that corresponds with the task there so if you get to an option that you that you're not going to use just hold a button for about two or three seconds and it will skip itself so we're just going to keep going all the way down uh, i'm not going to enable the hotkey or anything either uh, so we'll get to the end we'll press ok say hey you didn't enable the hotkey it's going to use select as the default and for me, that's going to be fine. So we'll click the yes there. And now you can see, great, we are at the uh, RetroPie home screen. However, we don't have anything to see. <laughs> There's no emulator showing, no ROM showing, and that's because we don't have anything uh, loaded in our system. So um, this would be the time when I would say, okay, well, um, you know, go go access your ROMs wherever you're getting them. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say where you should be getting them from, just as long as they are, you know, of legal means or backups of what you already have. 